Hello, my name is host Eric. I'm host talking to famous people. Well, I'm waiting for hopefully some famous people to arrive to talk with. I would like to talk about altruism a little bit as a starting point. So, I tend to talk a lot about uh, rights and duties, duties, rights, and responsibilities. People sometimes must forget that a rights-based framework is also a duty-based framework because it's it's for everything you are entitled to, you get a responsibility in return. Altruism is a different matter. And it occurred to me tonight, I sort of noticed, realized, understood, probably for the first time, how challenging it is to find a good example of real altruism. And how difficult it is to, in fact, come up with a way to manifest real altruism if you wanted to. If you're trying to do that. The reason it's a challenge is because a truly altruistic act has all the following qualities. Number one, it's unsought by anybody. In other words, you aren't doing it because somebody seeks it, wants it, whatever. So, number two, a true altruistic act is something that is actually appreciated by the other person. It's not sought by them, but it's appreciated. And number three, it's not perceived as charity in the sense that it doesn't... And number four, it doesn't come along with an obligatory reciprocal expectation. So, one of the things about reciprocity, of course, is that gift giving and allowing others to demand things of you can imply that you then will get to demand things of them. So, when you are doing something altruistic, I think you have to sort of take a utilitarian calculus on what counts as altruism. If they're expecting it, if you know you're going to have some sort of reciprocity out of it, regardless of whether that's why you're doing it, it doesn't really count as altruism. Not really. It's, I mean, it may be motivated thusly or something, but... Anyway. The reason we came to these conclusions was tonight Abraham did something that he's done before that I very much appreciate and it struck me that this is an example of something that's truly altruistic and it meets all those criteria I said above. Namely, when I have coffee, he will open my little creamer things for me and set them and hand it like set them up for me before I even think to look for the creamer or anything. I'm still sort of in sitting down mode going, yeah, okay, coffee's coming, and he's, if I want to order the coffee, he's already, like, opening the creams for me. Now, this is not something that I've ever asked him to do. It's not something that is typical of how we interact with each other. He's not, like, my servant or anything, you know. He doesn't chew my food for me. Uh, but it's something that he does because it's something that he saw his mom do for his dad, and then he did for his dad for a while, and it's just sort of something nice that he can do for people. He doesn't just do it for me, he does it for some other people as well in life, you know? We go to a restaurant, and he opens the creams for them before they're going to put in their coffee. Well, I think that's a perfect example of truly altruistic behavior. Number one, it's super appreciated. It's like, ah, oh, it's so convenient, I don't have to open the cream thing myself. Number two, I don't feel like it's charity, like, you know, I don't feel pitied at all. Number three, 
I don't feel like I owe him anything for doing that. He's just a nice little gesture. And therefore, he's not expecting to get anything out of it. Not gonna, he doesn't need to get out of it. And that's altruism. And, but most of, what I find most interesting about that example of altruism is the way in which it made me realize that when we talk about altruism most of the time, it's very difficult to find a truly altruistic act to use as an example uh, for analysis purposes. That's one. Abraham being straight up altruistic. Next part to talk about people. 